TSMC, or Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, is arguably Taiwan's crown jewel. It bears the pride of the nation and is the most valuable company the island has ever created. Foxconn might make more revenue and gets more headlines, but most of its factories are in mainland China. The founder, Terry Go, is a shifty character with an iffy reputation and close ties with the Communist Party. Regardless of his political stances, he is he's most well-known, actually, for scouring the world, cutting and ditching subsidy deals with governments, Google, Foxconn, Wisconsin, desperate for the jobs that his company provides. The majority of TSMC's manufacturing facilities are in Taiwan. The company has stayed in Taiwan, and it proudly bears the island's name in its own. Its founder and first CEO, Morris Chang, is revered in Taiwan, not just because someone photographed him on the MRT. In this video, an update and expansion of an earlier one, we're going to jump through TSMC's history and its future challenges. In 1985, a 50-something former Texas Instruments executive named Dr. Morris Chang was looking for a new job. He had just quit a short stint as COO and president of General Instrument, a small semiconductor manufacturer. He had been disappointed by the company's unwillingness to invest in R&D. It was then that a Taiwanese government official named K.T. Lee brought Dr. Chang, born in Ningbo near Shanghai, over to Taiwan. He was asked to serve as president of ITRI, a government research institute studying new technologies. He streamlined the government organization, making it compete for private contracts, and even fired a few people for incompetence. This would earn him hate mail from Taiwanese legislators. A year or so later, Lee came again with another idea. The Taiwanese government wanted a semiconductor company that could compete with the established semiconductor giants, like National Semiconductor, Intel, and AMD. Why not be its CEO? That company would be TSMC. So TSMC started life as a Shinchu-based corporate spin-off from ITRI. It was jointly owned by the Taiwan government, which continues to own the largest single portion today with some 6%, electronics company Philips, and private investors, with $220 million of startup funding. Founder Morris Chang is today a billionaire, just barely. But unlike with Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates, it's not because he owns founding stock. He owns just 1% of TSMC. ITRI, TSMC's research institute parent, had licensed an outdated processing technology, which it had then later improved on its own to a newer generation. The organization, though, was still two generations behind its competitors. In an industry where either you are at the latest generation or you suck, this is a great disadvantage. Adopting the traditional semiconductor manufacturing business model to compete head-to-head -head against the likes of Intel would guarantee automatic failure. Chang needed to find a model that could work around this shortcoming. He would recall a friend who had approached him a few years ago looking for money to buy equipment for manufacturing some chip designs he had made. That friend would eventually find a manufacturer willing to quote-unquote rent him the capacity at a fraction of the cost. This got Morris thinking. Around then, there were about 50 semiconductor companies called Fabless Semiconductor Companies. They designed special-purpose chips that were brought to life by the big semiconductor giants like Intel or IBM under contract. Those giants drove tough bargains, though. They gave their Fabless customers lower priority space and demanded rights to design. So if a Fabless company came out with a hit, the giant would come out with a competing chip under their own label. But what could the Fabless companies do? No one could afford 50 to $100 million, I remember this was before VC was a big thing, to buy this expensive semiconductor manufacturing equipment, and no one really had the experiment, experience and expertise to do it anyway. Until now, TSMC opens its doors with a controversial premise. You guys design and sell your chips, we will handle all the manufacturing, and we will not compete with you. TSMC realized the crucial thing about this sort of industry, that it was a service-oriented business. Despite the fact that TSMC's technologies were far behind the market leaders, it collected its customers on the basis of customer service, trust, and collaboration. TSMC succeeded when its customers did. Thus, the company grew. It grew by helping fabulous customers like Broadcom, NVIDIA, and others grow. It invested immense amounts of money in R&D to investigate the latest techniques and in servicing its customers. The most famous example is how it won the Apple contract. All it took was employing 6,000 people 24-7 and investing $9 billion of their own money for a brand new factory in Tainan over just 11 months. Morse Chang retired in June 2018 after some 30 years as TSMC's CEO. Today, the company is the acknowledged market leader in the foundry industry. It has started out with technology far behind the rest, but is now either number one or number two, depending on who you're asking. But as always, there are concerns and competitive threats. And the latest, as always, comes from China. And that's what we'll talk about in part two. Thanks.